The Lord be with you. I had somebody counting me down earlier. Thank you. I appreciate you. Keep me, keep me straight. Welcome to worship here at Epworth. Glad you're here today. Those of you who might be worshiping online, you're probably going to be finding us on, only on YouTube today for some reason. I don't know if we got put in Facebook jail or not, but <laughs> and we're not on Facebook today. Uh, something, some glitch or something. I'll work on this afternoon, but we'd like to welcome you. Make sure you let us know you're taking part in worship today. Uh, go to our Facebook page or our our. Uh, YouTube page. It seems so many all off. <laughs> Go to our YouTube page. Let us know you're uh, worshiping with us that way. Also, you can also call the office and let us know here in the sanctuary. Please fill out the blue card in your seat backs, one per family, and let us know you're uh, you're here with us today. As we prepare for worship today, we just want to uh, just take a deep breath, put the world behind us, focus exactly what we've come here to do, and that's to worship God together as we begin our worship service this morning. Good morning. If you will please stand and join me in singing our hymn of praise this morning, Victory in Jesus. Please remain standing for our call to worship found in your bulletin or on the screen this morning. In times of hardship and doubt, because of the good works you see in, the world. 
in times of struggle and pain. In times of cynicism and skepticism. Believe because Christ dwells in you. If you'll remain standing this morning for our songs of praise and worship, starting with Stand in Your Love. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes, Steal the joy I own. When brokenness and pain is all I know, oh, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand.
great song to begin our worship with. Mm -hmm. I want to invite you to remain standing as you're able for the reading of our gospel lesson this morning. Uh, we are reading out of uh, the gospel according to St. John. We'll pick up uh, in the 14th chapter this morning. We'll begin at the first verse. Jesus is speaking here, and he's talking to the disciples that have gathered with him. This is part of what, uh, what we have come to call the farewell discourse. This is uh, the last time that, that Jesus is going to uh, speak with uh, his disciples. And he says to them, don't be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. My father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And when I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me so that where I am, you will be too. And you know the place I'm going. And Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you, really, if you have really known me, you will know, also know the Father. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus replied, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been with you all this time, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me and does his work in me. Trust me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on account of the works themselves. And I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. And when, and when you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. And I'll, we got somebody. He's ready. I invite our youngsters to come down. We'll have our time together. <laughs> oh, he, he turned around. <laughs> come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Well, come here. Oh, come on up here. <clears throat> All right. Sit right here on my leg. Can you do that? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, man. What a good-looking group this morning. You know, you, you, some of you even look like you took a shower this morning. You did it? That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I'm glad you all are here. You all look good, and, uh, and somebody has the mystery bag. Do you know what's in here? Yes. Do you? Can I hold it? All right. Does anybody else know what's in here? I do. You do? I don't tell him. He showed you? No, they saw me put it in. They saw you? You saw him put it in? Were you sneaking on him? No. No? Because we were there Oh, you were there with him. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Can I shake it? I know, I know. Can I, I can shake it? Yeah. All right. What do you think? You know what? Don't, 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 don't tell, don't tell. Don't tell. Water bottle. 
Water bottle? Water, 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 water bottle? Water bottle. Here, you want to feel it? What do you think? It's Gatorade. You think it's Gatorade? It's Powerade. It's water. It's a drink. It's a drink, huh? What, what, if, it's, what if it's shampoo? What if it's shampoo? No? It's Gatorade. Are you sure? All right. All right. Let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look. What color do you think it is? Did you, t did you tell everybody? Did you tell everybody? Did you tell everybody? This is, this is, this is red Gatorade. What flavor? Fruit punch. Fruit punch. That's right. Fruit punch. Fruit punch. Have you ever, have you ever had fruit punch Gatorade? Yes. Yes. No, you haven't? So a few, a, a, a few haven't had it. Uh, some, some have. Most have. When do you drink fruit punch Gatorade? When you're hot. When you're running. When you're running. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes. Yeah. When, when you're what? When you're on vacation. That's all. Because, because, because you, because you get, you get dehydrated on vacation, don't you? What do you think? I know. I'm, yeah, it's, we're not going to open it because if we spilled, there would be red all over everything. And you know what red does better than anything else? It stains. You're right. Although we could spill it on your shirt, we never would know, would we? You want, you want to pour some on your shirt? No, we're not going to do that. All right. So is this, is this yours or somebody give this to you? Um, it was at our grandma's house. It was at your grandma's house? And she let, did you sneak it or did you ask her for it? I, I, uh, it, was, uh, so, it was, so, boy, you just threw her under the bus. <laughs> did, did, did you sneak it or did you ask for it? Her, that's her, that's her. Did you sneak it? No, you asked? Yeah. Good, all right, okay. So, all right, so I like, I like red Gatorade. I like, I like yellow Gatorade. I like the blue Gatorade. I like the orange Gatorade. I like Gatorade. Cause it, it does the body good, right? When when you when you when you've been out running or working hard and sweating, sometimes when you're on vacation and you do a lot of walking, right? So, sometimes sometimes it's sometimes it's just good to have a Gatorade just because, right? Because it, it 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 does it it it, it helps your body. And it replaces electrolytes, right? It replaces electrolytes. I don't have any idea what that means. But that's what everybody, that's what all the doctors and the people that, that uh, say we need to drink this tell us. It replaces electrolytes. It makes our body strong after we have sweated all the good stuff out. I think water does pretty good too. But Gatorade is pretty cool because, because, did you buy this? No. Did, did you buy this? No. But Grandma bought it, right? Grandma bought it. And you know why she bought it? A whole big package of it. Yeah, and you know why she bought it? You think she bought it to drink all by herself? No. She bought it for you all, right? Because she loves you. Yes, sir. I think I know a really good lesson. I think I figured out a really good lesson. Tell me. I think one of the lessons is... The stain part is God is, is like staining your clothes with like, God is like staining you with his book. Hey, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Did y'all hear that? If we, 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 we don't, you know, if, if we spill it and it stains our clothes, he said it's like the love of God staining us uh, when, when, when God's love pours out on us, right? That man, the man right there. The man right there. All right. That's, his, that's absolutely right. And, 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 and it's all about God's love, right? And, and God's love pours out over us and it stains us or makes us, makes us uh, look more like God or more like Jesus, right? 
You know, you could get stained all over, I know. It, it's also, it's also uh, love because grandma loves, loves you all enough to, to get you something good to drink, right? And, and other people, even if you don't go, if you don't go to grandma's house, uh, other folks have Gatorade at home because somebody loves you and wants, to, uh, and wants to take care of you, right? It's all about the love, right? It's all about the love. And, that, and that's the thing with God. Through Jesus Christ, God loves us. Come here, big boy. Come here. All right, sit down right there. I like a man that knows where he's going and where he wants to be. <laughs> all right, so it's all about the love. Remember that, okay? Next time you see a bottle of Gatorade and you open it up and you drink it, regardless of what color it is, somebody loved you enough to get that for you, to take care of you. It's all about the love. I know, I like the purple too. All right, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you. We thank you for uh, loving us, uh, to stain us with your love, to, to make us look like you, to share your love with us the way, and, and, and you do that through uh, allowing us to receive that love through other people. Help us to love folks, love each other, love our friends and our family, Help us to love even folks that we don't know so that they all uh, may get stained uh, by uh, your love. This is our prayer. God, I thank you for, uh, for these kids, for the homes they come from, the families that they represent, the way, God, that you are working in them, giving them eyes to see and ears to hear, growing in them, letting them see the wonder and the beauty in your world. Now go with them this week and in all the things that they do at school, at home, at play, with family, with friends. Let others see the world or see you in them and let the world see uh, them in you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Right? All right, hang on, hang on. Now, we got to give this to, I know, I know somebody that hasn't, you haven't ever had this, have you? Well, I want to say I'm sorry because uh, we've been doing this for a while, but, but my man Garrett here is going to get the mystery bag, and uh, you know the rules, right? Yeah, what is it? You know, yeah, can't be alive, can't ever have been alive, and an, and an adult has to know. All right, all right, cool. Here, let's, let's give this back. He's going to have teeth by September. What? I know. I know. All right. It's good to see you guys. All right. We're going to wave. We're going to wave. Need help? All right. Okay. Let's help you down here. There we go. You know, never too old to learn, right? <laughs> that may be one of the best ones, just because somebody gets it. Somebody gets it. All right. All right. Good group this morning. What a good group this morning. And what a good group here this morning. Let's pray. Pour your spirit out, Lord. Your people have gathered. We have joined together in this place. We have lifted our voices in unison, in prayer and in praise. We have heard your word read. And we trust, God, that you have opened Scripture to us, that you have already opened us to Scripture. And now, God, we pray that you will allow your servant to hide beneath the shadow of the cross. That the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts are pleasing to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So I don't, uh, I don't 
I don't want to put words in yours or anybody else's mouth. But it occurs to me that, that, that since you are here in this place where people gather uh, to uh, worship, we, and we not only worship, we gather together with each other in order to, in order to get close to or have a, an encounter with God. Since we're all gathered here together, I, I'm guessing that, that you like the idea of getting close to and encountering God. I like the idea of, of getting close to God, having, having a, a holy encounter. There's, there's something that, that, that's quite appealing uh, to me ab about that. Speaking directly with and directly to God, receiving clear instruction uh, about uh, uh, what God would have us do and what God, what God would have us not do. Never having to wonder about, about our next step. Never, never having to, uh, to worry about what word to speak, what action to take. Knowing uh, that, that because we've gotten closer to God, our life will, will have instantly gotten uh, smoother and easier. Never being confused about anything on any matter, any time. Always having divine clarity on every subject. That would be so cool. Only here's the thing. Regardless of what some people may have told us, we all know... At least I think we all know, we should all know, that it doesn't really work that way. At least not all the time. We all know, or at least we should all know, if we really read the stories about the people in the Bible who have this close and intimate relationship with, with God, we, we know, or we should know, that those folks often have uh, their, their lives uh, turned upside down and thrown, thrown into chaos. They, they, they regularly struggle with great adversity. They are sent to the margins of society, and they deal with difficult and sometimes hostile people sometimes they are even killed all because of this intimate, close, loving relationship with the Almighty. And, and, and if the threat of great adversity, of, of, of great uh, anxieties at times of, uh, of, of, this, of this tremendous disruption, maybe even the threat of death, if that's not enough to frighten us away, then we all know, or at least we should all know, if we spend any time at all working on building this close relationship with God, with the God that will, that will most likely uh, send our lives into chaos... We should know that we won't always know why God has put us in the places or the situations in which we find ourselves. We discover, we discover that, there, that, there, that there's often much more confusion than clarity in our lives. We, we, we discover that there are far more questions that arise than there are answers, especially easy answers or, or, or straight answers. And we discover all of this the more we get closer to God. At least that's been my experience. Having said all that, I'm sure that you all are feeling, are, are, are feeling uh, much more uh, reassured and comforted right now, right? <laughs> and we need look no further than the assigned lectionary passages for the day today to see a wonderful example of, of all this. The lection uh, pairs 
the, the reading out of John's gospel today with a reading out of, of Acts uh, at chapter 7 uh, in particular in uh, the book of Acts. And, and even though we didn't read this passage out of Acts this morning, allow me to, allow me to paraphrase it for you real briefly. In the seventh chapter of Acts, uh, we, we, we encounter uh, this person named Stephen. And Stephen is the, is the person, uh, the one chosen by the disciples to take the place of Judas after Judas's death. And in the seventh chapter of Acts, Stephen uh, is, is filled with the Holy Spirit. And Stephen is not an eloquent speaker. Stephen is, is filled with the Holy Spirit, and he, and he begins to preach, but not to a, a church full of wonderful folk like us. Stephen begins to preach to a hostile crowd. And the response that he gets is not a response that would, that would motivate any sane person to become a preacher. The crowd, the, the, the group that is gathered, they become enraged at, at his message. They, uh, they rush him. They scream at him. They drag him out to the edge of the city, out beyond the walls, and they stone him to death. And in the middle of, of this attack, Stephen prays. And, and, and he prays that God will receive his spirit. And, and he prays that God will forgive those who are throwing the stones. And then we are told Stephen dies peacefully, even though, even though this is clearly and horrific and violent end. I read that story this week, and I don't know if this is an indictment on the way that my mind works, but I kept hearing, kept hearing this tagline from a Christian radio station running through my head. <laughs> Positive and encouraging, Caleb. <laughs> Still, in light of the climate of the world in which we live, in light of the climate of what all is going on in the United Methodist Church, I think this story has something to say to us. As, as conversations about all manner of things are going on in the world as conversations about what is going on in the United Methodist Church uh, have uh, become increasingly more and more emotional and animated and hostile. And, and, and people on every side of every issue have, have hurt others and have themselves been hurt and wounded and, 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 we, and we, all, we all wonder in our minds, even if we don't say it out loud, is there anything positive and encouraging about any of this? And I'm reminded that just as he was for Stephen, that Christ is there in the middle of the chaos. Because if you go back and read the story, Jesus appears. And 
And so from, from, this, from this positively encouraging scene of Stephen's death, we go to our gospel reading this morning out of the 14th chapter of John's gospel where Jesus is apparently and quite unexpectedly telling the disciples, his closest followers, the people that he's, that he's spent the most time with over the last three years, telling them that he is going to die. But, he says, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't be troubled. I'm going to come back and get you. Take you to be with me. And then he follows up this bit of confusing good news with the clear as mud assertion that they should all already know the way to where he's going. <laughs> they should all already know exactly what he's talking about. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and just said, what? <laughs> what? I can, I can imagine in my mind's eye all the confusion that the disciples uh, had and, and, and what, uh, what they were, were feeling but were afraid to admit. I can imagine in my mind's eye the, the, all the questions that must have been racing through their heads but they were, they were too timid to ask until, until Thomas rather hopelessly exclaims, no, Lord, no, we don't know. We don't understand. And then in my, in my mind's eye, it seems like the, the floodgates of the questions would have burst open and all these questions would have come forth from all the disciples. And, and they're not dissimilar from many of the questions that we wrestle with and that we ask or that we, that we have in our mind that we're too afraid to ask today, especially in the United Methodist Church. What do you mean, don't be troubled? What's going to happen to us? Why does this have to happen? How are you going to come back and get us if you're dead? We don't even know where you're going. How can we possibly, how can we possibly know the way? Where, where, tell me where is God in all of this? And if there, if there were questions, if there were questions for the earliest and the closest followers of Jesus, those who, those who knew him best, those who, who had the most intimate relationship with him, then surely, surely it cannot, it cannot uh, be uh, unusual for people like us who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, who are being encouraged daily by folk like me to just have faith, to just believe, just give your lives in service to this very same Jesus, surely it can't be unusual for us to have questions as well. Right? And, and again, I'm, I'm not trying, I am not trying to put words into your mouths, but there are questions that I believe are normal and, and even appropriate for all of us. If this, is, if this is the kind of thing our faith leads us to, being uh, like or ending up like Stephen, who would really want that? 
Didn't, didn't Jesus come to save and protect us and give us abundant life? I mean, we talked about that last week. Then, then what is all this business about self-sacrifice and picking up crosses and dying in this life? What is all that about? What, what, wasn't, wasn't Jesus murdered for us and, and, and wasn't he murdered for his, for his testimony and allegiance to God? And now, and now he wants us to get in on some of that too? These are tough questions. These are tough questions, but they are absolutely legitimate questions. And not only is it okay for us to ask these questions, I think we must ask these questions. We must ask these questions. Friends, don't do not, hear me, do not ever, ever, ever let anyone tell you that you have to find, that you have to blindly follow Jesus or never ask questions about Scripture. I'll say that again. Do not ever let anyone tell you that you have to blindly follow and never question Scripture. Questions are inherent to who we are as people of faith. Do you know there's over, there's over 3,300 questions in Scripture, recorded in Scripture? Jesus, Jesus himself asked over 300 questions. He is asked by others almost 200 questions. And, and you know how many... Out of 200 questions, almost 200 questions, you know how many questions Jesus answers? <laughs> Three. Yes. Yes. We are expected to take those steps of faith at various times in our lives that will lead to the unknown. Yes, we are all going to face situations in which we cannot know the outcome except through wading into and journeying through the unknown with Almighty God at our side. But Jesus Christ will never ever chastise us or reject us for asking questions. In fact, in fact, Jesus tells us that we are to ask questions, that we are to count the cost. Go home today, read the end of the 14th chapter of Luke. We are to count the cost, we are to ask questions. So ask, consider, ponder, mull over, wrestle with, work through, inquire. Do all of this before you ever sign up with Jesus. Our, as, as followers of Jesus Christ, our purpose, our, our task, our job, if you will, is to love God and, and love others. And we do that by pointing folks to, or maybe it's better, it would be better said by, by, allowing, by allowing folks to see God in us and to see God through us and to experience God through us. So everything that we do, everything, every way that we act, every word that we speak, we should be seeking to, uh, to, to embody this genuine faith 
And, and that faith has to be, it must be grounded in honesty, rooted in transparency, and genuinely reflect the grace and the goodness, the tenderness and the openness, the love and the mercy of Jesus Christ. The same Jesus whose image we are continually to strive to mirror. The, who, the, 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 the same Jesus whose, um, whose, um, whose, whose life and actions we are to embody. Anything less, anything less minimizes and distorts the image of God. And that is a high and a holy calling. And it's not just for preachers. It's for all of us. All of us. And, 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 and such a life is, is unbelievably rewarding and fulfilling and complete. It is, also, it is also extremely challenging and demanding and incredibly life disrupting. It requires growth and transformation and change. And we all know, or at least we, we should know, that those things can be difficult. So Jesus wants us to be fully aware. Jesus gives full disclosure because, because he knows. He knew then, he knows now that some, sometimes being a follower of his means that we will be treated like he was. proclaiming our faith and living out that faith by speaking out for justice, acting with love towards all, standing with those who cannot stand by themselves, living for and giving our lives to others in the strong name of Jesus Christ because these are the things that he did can sometimes mean that some folk will be offended. And that might have consequences. Maybe, maybe not death and martyrdom like it was for Stephen, but consequences that will change our lives and put us at odds with people we know and people we don't. Put us at odds with people in authority over us and with people over whom we have authority. People we work with. Maybe our friends. Maybe even our own families. Giving, giving our lives to something bigger than ourselves sometimes means that it comes with risk. But if we want full, meaningful, abundant lives like we talked about last week, if, if we desire to really be faithful followers of Jesus Christ, should we not expect at least a little risk? Regardless of where we find ourselves in this journey through life, whether we, whether we identify as one who walks daily with Christ or whether, or whether we identify ourselves as one who isn't quite sure what we believe, at least not yet, maybe, maybe it, it says we identify ourselves as one whose heart is troubled and racing with anxiety because there's a few of us who have troubled hearts and anxious minds. Maybe, maybe we identify ourselves as one who is angry and confused and sometimes we're angry and confused about what we don't know 
Maybe, maybe we even identify ourselves as someone who is full of doubt. But regardless of how we identify ourselves, Jesus says, bring your questions. Bring your hardest, most difficult, most challenging question to God. Because God can handle it. <laughs> In fact, God wants those questions. Whether, whether you realize it or not, asking these difficult kinds of questions, wrestling with these answers is not just the first step of faith. It, it, is, it, it is an ongoing act of great faith to ask questions. And I believe that when we ask such questions, that the promise that Jesus made to Philip and the promise given to Stephen will be ours as well. That Jesus, who preached mercy and taught love, and the one who healed and fed and conquered death, will reveal to us nothing less Nothing less than Almighty God and God's great and perfect love for us, for us all, for you and for me and for the whole world. And I believe, I know this is good news. May we, may we always know it and believe it and embody it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, we bring our questions Not because we have no faith, but because of our faith. Strengthen our faith, oh God, we pray. In the midst of questions. And change us. Transform us. And allow us to be your people, for all, for all your people. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would, please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith for Easter. You'll find it on the screens or in your bulletin this morning as we declare our faith together. We believe in a God who surprises us on Easter morning, who reveals through an empty tomb all the fullness of God in creation and all that is. We believe in God, who is light in the darkness, who never gives up on love, who is always working for our good, who weeps when we weep, laughs when we laugh, who calls us to be more than we imagine ourselves to be, as God relentlessly transforms our tears into alleluias. We believe in Jesus Christ, who present at the beginning and is present in all creation, who was heard in the words of the prophets, who was enfleshed in the birth of a long-sought Messiah, who was alive in the lessons taught to disciples, who is alive, not stuck in a tomb of despair or remaining nailed to a cross, or buried in the tomb of the past, but living forever and walking with us on our life journey today, seen in our stories, who is present in everything we can see, touch, and imagine. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the invisible presence of God, the joy, hope, and peace possibilities opening all around us all the time. We believe the Spirit calls us to community, to compassion, to welcome, and to acts of mercy and justice, 
so that the whole world will quiver with wonder and hope. We are a people of faith and risen Christ. We see our Christ in everyone and in everything. We strive to live in such a way that the world will see Christ rising again in us and through us with the great message of Easter. God cannot be contained, not by books, not by traditions, not by institutions, and not by tombs. God lives. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Friends, Christ our Lord has invited us to his table, all of us who love him, all who sincerely repent of their sin, and all who desire to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess before God and one another. O oh Lord. Oh Lord. We, we confess, confess our, our broken and sinful sin. behavior and seek forgiveness for the harm that we have done to others and to ourselves. Enrich our faith and trust as we gather again at your table for this sacred remembrance. In these moments of communion together, may we experience the confidence of children who know they are loved and accepted completely. We who eat this bread become a people of living stones. May we who drink this wine become a people of salvation. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, friends, hear this. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Next part of our worship service is our offering time. Those of you who may be watching us this morning on Channel 6 or on YouTube, you can go to our website, fworth.info. You can uh, give that way or send a check to 420 West Iowa here in Chickasha, 73018. As we prepare for our offering here, let us pray. Father, you give us so much. You give us so much love. You give us so much peace when we ask for it. And Lord, we love you and we thank you for that. Lord, as we prepare to give our offerings this morning, let us return that love and grace that you give us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.
seated. That was beautiful. Mm. Mm. Friends, I invite you to follow along in our communion liturgy. The bold print as it's found in the bulletin or the words on the screen will be your part. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks and praise to you, holy God, through, who through your spirit anointed Jesus of Nazareth to tell your good news of grace and love through his life, through his teaching, through his death, and his resurrection. Oh, praise ye. Hallelujah. Break open the tombs of our lives so that we may know your power and take our courage from Christ's resurrection in order to live new lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grant us the fear and hope of those who came to the empty tomb and heard the words of the angel, Christ is not in the tomb. Christ is risen. Christ will go before us into the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pour out your spirit of resurrection on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and juice that we may experience newness in our own lives and bear your good news to the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to you, holy God. Amen. Amen. And now, with confidence of children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. In a moment, we'll be given, uh, you'll be given an invitation uh, to come and uh, partake in this holy meal. There are few instructions, but here they are. When you're invited, we invite you to come down the center aisle uh, with your hands cupped. You'll be given a piece of bread. You can choose to either dip into the chalice, or if you would prefer, uh, you can bypass the chalice and take, and take one of the little cups out of a tray. You're invited to stay and pray as long as you would like. When you return to your seats, we ask you return by the outer aisles. There are baskets uh, on the prayer rail. Any offering, any gift that you would choose to leave uh, in the baskets here will be used uh, in our benevolence ministries, our, our Samaritan uh, uh, ministries here uh, at Epworth. I would also share this, that this is... Christ's holy table. And that means, in the United Methodist tradition, that that table is open to all. To all. And there may be some folks here who come from backgrounds or traditions uh, that, that uh, have some uh, limitations on who may participate in the, in the holy meal. We believe that it's a holy encounter when we come and share this meal together. Christ is present with us. It's a converting ordinance, to use the words of John Wesley. I say it's transforming. So if you're with us, you need to know that the invitation is for you. If you're watching us on television or online, 
I invite you to pause uh, right now and go get a piece of bread and a cup of juice or something like that and share with us. And I invite us all to encounter Christ at this table. I also invite uh, Debbie and, and um, yes, please, Liz, Liz, come on, come on down, come on, Liz, come on down, come and help. Liz, I, I, keep, I keep thinking diamonds, right? On the night in which he gave himself for us, our Lord Jesus, in sharing the last meal he would eat with his disciples, those closest to him, took bread. And he gave thanks for the bread. And then he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat this. This is my body. It's broken for you. And every time you gather together and you share this meal and you tell our stories, remember me. And after the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to the disciples and he said, drink this. It is my blood, the new covenant. And my blood is poured out for you and for all people. And every time you get together and you share this meal and you tell our stories and you drink this cup, remember me. And people of faith have been gathering together and sharing this meal, eating this bread and drinking this cup ever since. We tell the stories and we remember. And we continue that now. This is the body of Christ. It's given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. And it's for the forgiveness of sins. Friends, the table's been prepared. The invitation has been extended. Please come.
And now, let's pray the prayer after receiving communion. We give you thanks, O God, for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Allow us grace to go into the world, strengthened by your Spirit, to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you would, please join us for our final song, our sending forth 10,000 reasons. Can you come sing with me? I'll sing with you. I'll come sing with you. <laughs> It's a good day. Good to see you. Glad that you all are here. We're, we're so glad that those who worship with us on Channel 6 and online have taken the time to worship with us as well. Our prayer is that you have had a holy encounter and that you are transformed and changed somewhat, a little bit, from when you gathered earlier. We got announcements? Got a few announcements here. Uh, first off, you might notice we have a little rose here, and that's in honor of Charlotte June Epperson, born this past week to Jay and Janie Epperson, the grand folks, and of course Josh and uh, Brandy had their baby uh, recently, so we have the rose in honor of them. Uh, we, don't forget we've got our normal activities coming up this week. 
Uh, we've got, uh, of course, uh, we've got choir. We've got our Wednesday night meal. We've got a few circles meeting on Thursday. Next Sunday, guys, don't forget, I'm the world's worst. My wife will tell you. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. You, you left yourself open. I did. That's the way it is. And don't forget, we still need some... Uh, some effort sharing is carrying closet items as well as more boxes for uh, for that. We'll also you'll see in there your birthdays for the week. Perfect. Oh, do we should we announce the higher calling? Yeah, we had to displace a few people in the balcony this week, and we apologize for that. But if you look up, we've had another casualty of our ceiling fell this weekend, so we will be getting that fixed. But uh, we're kind of watching it, make sure it doesn't fall on you. If you start seeing hard hats issued, start getting worried. We, 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 might, we may have to rope off that corner right there on the ground floor. Yeah. Uh, but, but you all were our guinea pigs today. Nothing fell this morning, so I think we're safe. I think we're good. All right, all right. As you go out this week, doing all the things that you do, encountering all the people that you will encounter, facing down the challenges and the opportunities and everything in between. Our prayer is that you will allow God to be in you, to shine through you, to love others around you, and then we want to invite you to come back next week. I will. I know. And when you come back, bring somebody with you. Now may the love of Almighty God, the grace of Jesus Christ, His, His Son, our Lord, and the ever-abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you, be in you, guide you this day and every day. Amen. Amen. Amen.